on January 6th, 1982, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I broke into a chamber beneath the Calvary Escarpment, north of the city wall of Jerusalem. In that chamber is the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread, and several other things that I didn't see. They were covered with animal skins, with boards, and then with stones. We had excavated down that escarpment. We had found three cutouts in the wall, like a recessed bookcase. We know from the valley north of Jerusalem that the ancient kings and rulers cut these things out in cliffs near uh, populous areas or where a lot of people would be going by and they put plaques of stone and whatever else in there bearing messages. We found the cutouts, we found the cross hole. If you read in the book of Matthew and the Gospels where it talks about Christ's death, it says the earth shook violently and the rocks were rent. Right to the left of the cross hole at the base of where Christ died on the cross, the rock was rent. After Christ died and the centurion stuck his spear into Christ's spleen and the blood and water came out, it went down through that crack. It went on to the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant that God had arranged to be hidden in that chamber 600 years before Christ died. Now, what is the significance of this? Psalm 77, 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. On the day of atonement, the goat that represented Christ as the sin bearer, after all of the sins were figuratively transferred to its head, was killed. Its blood was taken into the most holy place and sprinkled on the mercy seat. Those folks look forward to the fact that Christ would die. They confessed their sins on the head of lambs and took the lives of these innocent little animals. We, by faith, believe that Christ has indeed died. And we, in praying to God in Christ's name, receive forgiveness of our sins by faith in that fact. The reason I dug in that particular place was an unusual thing that happened to me. I was walking by there, and my sons and I had gone to Israel to get chariot parts out of the Red Sea. Due to my own ignorance and carelessness, I got sunburns bad, my feet and legs swelled up, I couldn't get in the dining gear. So we were up hobbling around Jerusalem, waiting for the date that was on our ticket. We got one of those cheap tickets, that, you know, that you can only fly on the proper date. I was walking along and my left hand just went out like that and my mouth said that's Jeremiah's brother when the Ark of the Covenant's in there. Well, I didn't uh, do that. Deliberately it happened without my mental uh, intent to do so. And I knew that some supernatural power had used my arm and my voice. I wasn't sure which. So I went back home and started checking to see why the Ark of the Covenant might be there. And the research indicated that it quite likely would be there. The Ark of the Covenant most likely was carried out of the temple and hidden in this chamber during the 28 days between the time Zedekiah fled the city and the occasion when the Babylonian army came and destroyed the city, the temple, and the palaces, and all that. At that point in time, many people were probably being buried. I wasn't there, I don't know, but it seemed like that would be an opportunity to do that. Now, if the priest just took the Ark of the Covenant and started carrying it out and into a cave, the Babylonian army would get a glimpse of it. The Jewish people in the, in the city would have got a glimpse, and there would have been a real hubbub, if you know what I mean. So it appears they put in this thin wall stone box to make it appear that it was just another barrier. <laughs> now, when I found the Ark of the Covenant, the lid on the stone box had been busted and slid around, one end of it slid around to the side, and there was dried blood on both edges of that broken lid. 
And of course, later, when I had access to the mercy seat itself, it was large quantities of dry blood and serum on it. Normally, crucifixions didn't involve a whole lot of blood. However, it is stated that they wanted to make sure Christ was dead, so they stuck a spear in him. And the blood and water gushed out. So this was a bloody one. It's not ordinary blood, folks. It has 24 chromosomes only. All of us here have 46. Unless, you know, we have, there's a couple of genetic uh, anomalies that make that different. But Christ received 23 from his mother and one Y, sex determining factor from his father who was not a human father because had he received that from a human father it would have been accompanied by 22 autosomes now what this basically means is that his height his eye color his hair color and all of this was supplied from the genes of his mother's gene pool however mary and joseph both descended from David, uh, but none of us have 24 chromosomes. And there's a, something else. The Bible says, you will not leave my soul in hell, nor allow my body to see corruption. The blood of Christ is only dried out, folks, it's not dead. When we rehydrated it with normal saline, 72 hours of body temperature with slight, very gentle swirling and put the white blood cells in a growth medium. 48 hours later, we did a chromosome here. I didn't. I have people who are experts at that sort of thing to do these things for me. They asked me, where did you get this blood? Whose blood is this? This was in Israel. I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. I never saw people go into such a state of shock and fits and everything else as those people went into. I said, that's the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, they knew. They told me before I asked them to, when I asked them to perform this investigation, that I have dried blood up and you can't get a chromosome count on it because the white blood cells have to be alive what in order to do that. You can get DNA, you can get some other things, but you can't have a chromosome count. So this blood is unique, and it is Christ's blood. When Christ was crucified, the Romans had picked a place north of the city wall where most everybody that came and went they passed on their way to Jaffa, they passed here on their way to Damascus, on their way to Jericho, on their way to Anatoth, and all of these other places. They had to go along these, this road on the north side of the city because to the south, the east, and the west were big gullies. And you had to be pretty, you know, agile on your feet to go through those areas to get away from the city. So they chose this place for the crucifixion and they cut out three recessed areas into the rock face that would hold signs stating who the person was that was being crucified and what his accusation was, what he had been accused of. Well, in Christ's case, he was Jesus of Nazareth. However, Pilate said the king of the Jews and the Jews didn't like that. But he says, what I have written, I have written. North of the city wall of Jerusalem lies a beautiful garden right next to the crucifixion site. In that garden, less than 200 feet from the place that Jesus was crucified, is a tomb chiseled into the face of the cliff. Now we're going to go in. It's a 
Here we can see, right back here, it was dug out more, presumably because Christ was taller to accommodate him. It was out this door that Christ walked. The chamber where I found the Ark of the Covenant has since been perfectly cleaned out. And the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread, the candlestick, the golden altar of incense, they are all set out as they were in the earthly temple, except that the Ark of the Covenant is set, setting against the 12 foot long and 18 foot wide or high wall. The tables of stone were found in the Ark of the Covenant. I personally removed them with the assistance of four angels who lifted the mercy seat, which I would estimate weighs about 900 pounds of solid gold. And one of these angels told me to take the tables of stone out of there. Okay, I'd like to show you the proof, and that's in the Bible code. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to explain how the Bible code works or a little bit of information about it, the background. In the advent of computers around 30 years ago, the Bible code was discovered and brought to light. This breakthrough revealed secret messages that were found in the Torah that were hidden for thousands of years. Researchers today use Bible code software that searches the Torah for equidistant letter sequences, or ELS for short messages. Now, according to wikipedia.org, this is their explanation. The Bible code, Hebrew, Hatzophan, Hatanchi, also known as the Torah code, is a purported set of secret messages encoded within the Hebrew text of the Torah. This hidden code has been described as a method by which specific letters from the text can be selected to reveal an otherwise obscured message. Okay, I have Bible code search software and I did a search and I found Ron Wyatt and the Ark of the Covenant, but my Bible code search software is very basic. So I found the codesearcher.com YouTube channel and I found their research was amazing. Uh, Jonathan and his other uh, code researchers that have a lot of experience doing Bible code search and very advanced software. And I found their Ron Wyatt table was amazing. It had his discoveries and other details. Now, you got to understand that this scripture goes back, it's thousands of years old. This code had to be in there for thousands of years. This was God's way of proving or supporting Ron Wyatt's research, his discoveries. This proves not only that Ron Wyatt found the Ark of the Covenant, it also proves that the Bible is 100% true. I hope you enjoy this short video. It is fantastic and proof that the Bible is true so this is just another example um triangulating another event um if you're familiar with ron wyatt and what um Kyle was just talking about here's the same event now there's, there's a story behind this that ron wyatt believed that um the ark of the covenant was still somewhere in jerusalem since the time of, of um jeremiah in jeremiah's grotto right Jeremiah hid, uh, supposedly in this story, Jeremiah hid um, the Ark. And then there's a connection to the Maccabees as well. You know, the, the, during the time frame of this, 
Maccabees were the zealots, the, the, the ones who were revolting against the, um, was it, is it Babylonians at the Maccabees time? I think it's the Mac, it's Babylonians, right? I believe so. Donna? No, it was, uh, it was, uh, the Greeks. The Greeks. Yeah. Okay. So it's the Greeks. Time of Hellenization. Right. So you could, you know, find from Golgotha connected to Ron Wyatt, uh, in here, Hanukkah, Mercy Seat, Grotto, um, several anomalies that, that seem to be pointing in that direction. Like the blood is sufficient. Uh, in this story, it's, it's said that Yeshua was on the cross and this thing was hidden under the, the, the cross in the mountain uh, over the, the hill called the skull, Golgotha, in a grotto there. Um, to, and to search it out and find anomalies that come up, it kind of leads to belief that maybe there's something to his story. Um, if you can find all of these anomalies very condensely together uh, with verses, and I'll have to go get the original file and read you the other verses, that verses that run through there seem to have a direct connection. The Ark of the Covenant, we're talking about the Ark of the Covenant here. It's there several times. Mercy seat, of course, that's part of the Ark of the Covenant, this in between the two cherubs. Um, yeah, Yeshua's name, Yehoshua. Um, yeah, that's just a, just another example of, of how this works. That's it's, a great table. Very impressive. Yeah, and it's, it's not, you know, it's not like I was, you know, a follower of Ron Wyatt's work or he knew anything about him. Somebody had approached me and said, you know, you need to check this out. Search it out and see if you can, you know, figure out this story is true. Because, and I'll tell you who it was. It's, um, it's a subscriber and friend of mine. Um, his name is uh, Bozong. He, uh, that's his last name, Bozong. He's a private investigator from, from um, Michigan and um, one of my subscribers. But he's fascinated with the story. And he said, check and see if you can see any connection to Jeremiah's Grotto and Golgotha with Ron Wyatt. And this was, was the result of that. Um, I, I came back and I was like, you know what? This is amazing, bro. I didn't even know about this story about this guy. I heard stories, but I really wasn't pursuing him as, as you know, a lead on something fascinating. But this was the result of that. And uh, just uh, look at that. Is found. Um, is, can I just saw that. From Golgotha is found. And there's an altar under that, you see. Now, that didn't happen by accident. Uh -uh. I didn't come together like this in the scriptures on an accident it, with, you know, people, places, and events, and, and, and things that are all connected together. Now, we shared the First John chapter 5, verses 7, 8, and 9 with you on the bus. Remember that? There are three that keep record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. And this is God's witness and testimony of His Son. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. Folks, that's the place. And what the Bible tells us is that this is God the Father's proof to a lost world that they have been redeemed by the blood of His Son. Right? That is the Father's proof. When people have seen this and become aware of this, if they reject that, there's nothing else to follow. That is the heart and soul of the plan of salvation. And He has told us, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. In other words, it don't matter what we've done in the past. It doesn't matter how weak and sinful our natures are. Christ made provision for all of that. And He died for us. When the Holy Spirit sets up housekeeping in our hearts, 
we will develop a love for lost souls that will constrain us to do those things which are very inconvenient, time-consuming, expensive, and all of that, and that is working for lost souls. And when Christ comes, instead of fleeing and trying to hide from the face of him that sits on the throne, we'll look up and say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. And that's our choice today. Ron Wyatt's discoveries are proof that the Bible is true and the Word of God is the Bible. It is recommended that you hear the Gospel Jesus asked Paul to preach to the Gentiles so you can be saved. This is how to be saved according to the Word of God, the Bible. First, admit you are a sinner and you need the Savior Jesus Christ. For this Bible verse says that all are sinners. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The gospel Jesus asked Paul to preach to the Gentiles. It was very dramatic how Jesus chose to stop Paul knocked him off a horse and blind him for three days jesus wanted paul to be the light to the gentiles now here's the gospel that jesus wanted paul to preach and it's found at 1 corinthians 15 1 through 4. moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also ye have received and where ye stand by which also ye are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Salvation is not of works. It is of your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior alone. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 proves this. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. This means that you cannot earn heaven. It is God's sovereign power that he can save you through grace. So you must believe on Jesus Christ alone. His finished work is what saves you. You're saved and justified by Jesus if you have faith in his finished work. Now Romans 3, 24, 26 proves this. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. A propitiation is a replacement. Through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus this means that Jesus the righteous one his righteousness is imputed unto you and God only sees Jesus' righteousness. Jesus took the punishment and gave the ultimate blood sacrifice one time forever. And because you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior alone, His finished work, your sins are washed away. 
There is no greater love than this. You are saved by Jesus if you have faith in him as your Savior. Now Romans 10.9 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Again, you do not earn heaven. It is a gift to those that have faith in Jesus as their Savior alone. I hope this video helped you. God bless.